Hi, this is Nader Moynfair, and welcome to this video of a patient that has a hemorrhage inside the eye from diabetes. And today we're going to be removing the blood from the inside of his eye and trying to remove all the relevant scar tissue and then apply laser. Um, you may remember from my previous videos that this is a a standard uh, three port system and now we're putting in the lens that gives us a nice wide angle view. To the left is the light pipe, to the right is the vitreous cutter and all the red material that you see floating around is blood in the vitreous. Blood can arise from different reasons inside the eye whether it be trauma or blockages in arteries or veins but in this case it's from poorly controlled diabetes. This patient also has um, end-stage renal disease and is actually on dialysis. And I'll come back to the relevance of that in a little bit. So these cases are sort of like peeling back a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, we're peeling back the top of the bread and then the peanut butter and then the jelly without, tr without damaging the last piece of bread on the bottom, which is the retina. So it takes some planning and some careful forethought um, as to how to peel uh, the peanut butter and the jelly without damaging the underlying retina. So uh, this video has been accelerated for purposes of presentation. The vitreous gel, which is the main part of the gel, has already been removed. And the white stuff that you are looking at is scar tissue from diabetes and as the uh, the the vitreous is released um, free blood is often released as well and that's what you see at this point so i'm trying to uh, evacuate the free floating blood and quite often we will elevate the infusion of the fluid inside the eye the pressure to help control the blood and that's been discussed in previous uh, videos. And in a moment, you're gonna see me trying to clear out some of this layered blood um, after a few moments of waiting with elevated uh, pressure in the eye. So I'm going back and working on some of the scar tissue. To your left is the macula, which is a central area of vision. And that actually looks pretty good. Um, the traction on that area has been relieved. To the right of it is the nose, and that's what we call the nasal tissue. And I'll come back to the relevance of that in a moment. So I'm gonna to try to clear some of this layer of blood and there's different ways of doing it. Um, some machines have what's called a reflex ability where it, it pushes out a plume of fluid um, and then you can evacuate the blood. I'm just very carefully and methodically just clearing off the layer of blood so I can get a better view. And then the decision becomes what to do about the scar tissue on the nasal side. Well, as I said before, this patient is on um, uh, dialysis and folks such as he can only stay flat in the, in the bed and in the gurney for so long. So we have to kind of pick and choose our battles. So what I did um, in this case was to elect to um, be happy with the result of reattaching the, the macula and um, going back and removing the, the formed vitreous gel as much as I can to prevent the rehemorrhage and trying to release the traction from the, um, the, the bottom piece of the wonder bread to the top so we don't develop a, a retinal detachment. And then in a few moments, you'll see a bunch of bubbles of air come in. That's called an air fluid exchange. And then I do laser. The reason I do the air fluid exchange before the laser is twofold. One, the air helps prevent rebleeding. It it applies a natural pressure, and two, the air minifies the view so that I can see farther out and do the laser um, more comprehensively. As you can see, the blood vessels are pretty white in this patient. That means there's not a lot of blood flow, and again, that plays into factor as to how aggressive we want to be. Um, so in a moment, you'll see the air bubbles coming in, and that's the air fluid exchange. And then you'll see the bright green laser spots, and um, uh, that's called panretinal laser photocoagulation, which is a mainstay 
of this procedure. So as retina surgeons, we're often confronted with making um, delicate choices at the time of surgery. Sometimes we go too far and we create problems. Sometimes we uh, cut ourselves too short and we have to end up going back into the operating room. In this case, I decided to leave the scar tissue uh, away from the center of vision untouched. Fortunately, that intuition paid off in this case. The patient has 2050 vision, um, which is far better than the vision of only seeing hand motions before surgery. Um, I appreciate your taking the time to walk through this video with me. Um, I wish you all the best. Thank you.